क्या हम बोले हेलो अभी आप लाइव हैं आप यहाँ पर कर सकते हैं हेलो ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट्स ओके लाइक करके आप यहाँ पर सेंड कर वो लोग भी कुछ आवाज से पूछने या अच्छा आई एम हियर इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेरी प्लीज आस्क एम आई ऑडिबल टू यू Fine. So, uh, are you enjoying this course?
any query, any confusion you have? Uh, sure, uh, just ask me about the gating system. Uh, yes, actually, actually, the functions of gating system, uh, we have a question. In fact, there are certainly uh, genuine queries from uh, many students. And uh, see, the prime function of gating system is uh, what we discussed in the class uh, was uh, regarding, uh, you know, how quickly you can fill the cavity uh, so that uh, there is no premature solidification. And second thing is uh, that, uh, uh, you know, to entrap these uh, dross particles or foreign impurities and all that. Uh, that may be also because, uh, you know, maybe because of the aspiration effects. Uh, for that, we designed the gating system in such a way that you have... Uh, uh, not at all any aspiration or avoid the aspiration. Uh, as regards this uh, the point about this shrinkage is there. So shrinkage, you know, uh, uh, remotely we can say that uh, somehow it may be remotely connected because, uh, you know, that may add poor proper gating system will certainly aid in uh, achieving directional solidification and then directional solidification can further be linked to having you know uh, to avoid the shrinkage and all that so uh, in fact uh, uh, that also can be remotely linked to uh, about this shrinkage but mainly as you know when we talk about the gating system uh, at most of the places we talk about two things but then uh, the shrinkage also, that uh, part also may be right. So avoiding shrinkage also. Because in many of the textbooks you might have uh, referred to and, and sometimes you will see that uh, uh, that will avoid, you know, or that will, a proper gating system will certainly uh, provide a good uh, atmosphere for the directional solidification because you can, uh, you know, you can change the, uh, you know, geometries uh, so that the proper directional solidification is achieved or, or so. So there should not be much confusion about uh, that. Is it all right? No, what are the op what is the option which you have given? The correct uh, no, which option you have given as correct one? I mean, all the options or only two options? In question number one, perhaps we are talking about. So have you given all of the above? So is it? Okay, that 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 may be uh, assumed to be correct. I think uh, by mistake it was uh, uh, taken to be the option only first and third. So your option will be correct, and we will try to you know do accordingly. Hi, Jeevan, uh, you are talking about the, the progressive directional solidification. Basically, uh, 
Okay, Akshay, then, then you may be right. Maybe I, I will we have to talk to the NPTEL and we will try to see that somehow it was a mistake from our side to, uh, you know, tick that. So that was that. Uh, Jivan, uh, you have talked about uh, progressive directional solidification. Actually, progressive solidification is one thing and the directional solidification is another thing. Uh, see, progressive means it will progress uh, from outward towards inward. So that's basically the mechanism, that's the natural mechanism of solidification. Uh, you know, when uh, any liquid metal will go into the cavity, then the first uh, metal to be solidified will be at the surface and then the, you know, the, the solidification will move towards uh, the inner, inner direction. So the, at any cross section, basically, the, um, the, at the wall, there will be solidification first and then towards the inside, it will be going on. So that is progressive solidification. As far as directional solidification is concerned, uh, you know, in that a direction should be maintained. Direction means uh, that is with respect to the placement of the riser. So wherever riser is there, that part should be solidified at the end. So that is your, uh, uh, you know, directional solidification. So you will intend uh, uh, to, you know, practice in such a way that solidification will start from the remotest portion uh, you know, remotest at, at, at the maximum distance from the riser and uh, at the riser or near the riser, it will be uh, solidified towards the end. So that's how uh, these progressive and directional solidifications are uniquely defined. Now, the thing is that both must be maintained because directional solidification should also go and progressive solidification should also be there properly so that, uh, you know, the, 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 there is a, a completely sound, uh, you know, uh, pattern of solidified structure you are uh, obtaining, proper solidification occurs. So that's how these progressive and directional solidifications are uh, basically defined. Is it clear to you, Mr. G1? Fine, thank you. See, uh, Mr. Yogesh Sinde, you have talked about in which gate, gating system flow rate is constant. Basically, uh, when we talk about uh, the top gating, and if you assume that, uh, you know, because the, in that the head is normally constant. So, assuming that your uh, from the top, the, the liquid is full. So basically, uh, in that case, uh, uh, the flow rate will be same. So as the time progresses, there will not be any, you know, change in the flow rate. If we talk about uh, bottom gating, uh, in bottom gating, basically, as the liquid metal will be rising, the head, uh, metal head, which is available for giving the velocity, that decreases. Uh, similar is the case in the parting gate. In parting gate also, uh, you know, half, uh, you know, if, if, if it is half and half in the, you know, bottom side and in the half in the upside. So once it is half filled up to that, it is a case of top getting. So there is no problem. But once it starts uh, filling, you know, as the case of, uh, as like the bottom getting. So in that case, again, uh, you know, flow rate will not be constant. So basically, flow rate is assumed to be constant in the case of top gating. Certainly, we have to assume that in that case, and, and that's very, I mean, in default, we assume that uh, the metal is uh, full, you know, from the uh, pouring basin till, uh, you know, at the uh, exit of the gate. So that's how we assume. In that case, uh, you can see that in the case of top gating, uh, you know, flow rate will be constant. Is it clear to you?
uh, Mr. Yogesh, you had written that I correlated it with the time required to fill mold cavity. Uh, no, actually, that was not the aim. We talked about in that lecture also because, uh, uh, you know, uh, the problem, just show me the problem. Uh, the problem was, uh, which was the problem for the top plating, is it? Uh, so, uh, it was this fourth assignment uh, and uh, here in the fourth assignment, yeah, uh, the flow rate of uh, metal uh, is always constant while entering the cavity. So, while entering the cavity means from the gate. So, that is clear, uh, you know, when it is entering into the cavity, that time flow rate. Because uh, flow rate will be depending upon the area of the gate and the, you know, uh, uh, area of gate and the velocity, uh, you know, through the gate. So that's what it is. So that's why the top gate will be the answer. Uh, Mr. Yogesh, uh, you have your question is uh, answered. Now, uh, Rishi Ravi, Mr. Rishi Ravi is asking about uh, Progressive solidification, simple definition. So simple definition is uh, progressive means uh, certainly from outward towards inward. So that is, uh, you know, the, the definition uh, for the progressive. It's a, it's a um, you know, it's a kind of, uh, you know, mechanism of uh, uh, solidification in which the, the solidification will start at the surface and it will move uh, towards the inner side. So that's how the, you know, uh, the progressive solidification is uh, defined uh, and, uh, uh, you know, and, and the directional, uh, we, we talk about uh, the different, you know, uh, you, you know, that directions is fixed. That is from the remotest par portion of the remotest distance uh, from the uh, riser uh, to the, you know, towards the uh, riser. So that's what... Uh, so it will be starting from wall of casting towards the center of casting. That's, uh, you know, that option D uh, is quite clear. That's what it is. Uh, Mr. Akshay Singhi, uh, your question is that, uh, can you explain uh, concepts in skim uh, bob and shrink bob? Yeah, uh, actually both these, you know, uh, both these are the part of the uh, gating system. And uh, uh, the, you know, skim bob, basically, it will be skimming out. So it will be the purpose for the, for taking the, you know, uh, for taking the um, uh, impurities, uh, you know, uh, into it. So that will, because the pressure will be less, so impurities will go into it. So that is skim bob and shrink bob. Basically, it's uh, for the, you know, for the shrinking. So, so, so skim bob is basically related to the, you know, uh, uh, for the, uh, for, for filtering that, uh, you know, extra, uh, you know, uh, impurities or so. Uh, Mr. Jeevan, uh, the difficulty level of exam will not be too high. So it, it will be similar to that you do in the assignments. So, uh, and also, you know, we solve the questions. So you just uh, have, uh, you just uh, uh, try to have the concept about the, uh, you know, problem solving. Uh, and you should do study uh, the textbooks and all that. So that way, uh, things will be all right. If you go through the lectures and if you refer the books also, and that will uh, increase your confidence and uh, you will do quite good. Are you audible, you people? Hang on. Uh, 
uh yes i i will talk to first about uh, uday mr uday kumar how to increase lead metal casting per minute what do you mean by lead metal casting uh, per minute how to increase lead metal casting per minute i i could not understand uh, you know the essence of the question uh how to increase the lead metal casting per minute maybe uh, you you are uh, you you want to ask something different please uh, get it uh, uh, make it more clear then uh, what is uh, horn gate difficult to imagine so yes um, you know horn gate uh, you see when we talk about uh, the uh bottom gating so uh, when we talk about uh, the bottom gating okay okay i, I will come to mr uday kumar who was asking about how to increase lead metal casting per minute okay see uh, the thing is that uh, uh the the um, lead metal ca for any casting you have to, once you have to increase the casting rate suppose uh, for increasing casting rate uh, you know you have to uh, increase either the velocity or you have to increase the cross section through which the metal is entering so that's how you can increase the metal casting rate and uh, certainly the on the higher side you will have a uh, you will have to pose a limit to avoid the turbulence and uh, uh, on the uh, lower side uh, certainly uh, you know there is no such you have to see that the metal should go uh, i mean uh, before it solidifies so it should go you know quickly so that's how you can uh, do it then i was talking about mr yogesh sinde he has asked about horn gate difficult to imagine so basically you know in the normal case the gate you know will be like it will go from the top and it will go towards the bottom and then there, there will be you know uh, the corner at which it will further move and it will enter at uh, you know again uh, at sharp corner into the bottom part so that is your and you get you know the um, you know, sharp bend and also in those cases when the metal falls and if the metal is of large density so it will create impact and that may lead to uh, you know erosion of the sand so horn gates basically it will be like a horn you know so you will have a horn type so it will be streamlined type of uh, geometry so without much of uh, uh, you know much of the bend you know a straight bend or so it the metal will enter into certainly it will enter through the bottom uh, you know uh, flask only uh, but uh, uh, that will be smooth it's not like it's not uh, giving any impact on uh, at any place Uh, on the gating structure and it will be flowing that way the only thing is that uh, when it will enter at that time basically flow being more so it will be producing one fountain type of effect that's what was discussed also so that is that so so that is uh, then i have a, a query from mr rishi ravi who is uh, preparing the from the pn rao book fine see uh, this is something about the cane situation and uh, uh, you know in the cane situation these are the constants so this uh, constants uh, you know either it will be positive or negative depending upon positive or negative sign it is so somewhere you will have the positive sign and sign will a sign of constant will be negative or negative sign and sign of constant will be positive so that may go away and basically that will be given to you whenever you are giving uh, given the questions based on cane equations to solve in that case uh, you know uh, these constants will be given to you 
So it does not matter uh, what are the signs. So if you take different books, there will be uh, different signs. And accordingly, the sign of the constant will also change. So there is no, no need to worry much about it. Yeah, Mr. Akshay Singhi, you have again talked about uh, the age and riser contribution. Now see, uh, the thing is that uh, riser, as we know, uh, we talked about uh, this uh, riser and age contribution uh, by referring to the bar or the plate. So the riser, uh, you know, uh, ultimately uh, riser is going to be used uh, for feeding throughout, uh, you know, the uh, plate or the bar, wherever, uh, up to whatever distance it can do. Now, age contribution means from the age, basically, uh, because of the age effect, uh, there will be, uh, you know, automatically the solidification will start. So, in those uh, cases, so that will be the extra portion uh, which will be, you know, solidified uh, without much of the requirement uh, from the uh, riser because uh, that will be taking the liquid metal from the adjacent regions. So, uh, actually, uh, up to certain regions, the riser is going to, you know, uh, to ensure that here there will not be any shrinkage effect here they will be it will be able to do that and uh, towards that uh, other side from the edge side certainly as it is at lower temperatures it will be uh, quickly you know removing the heat so some part it will be solidifying there because of that end you know there are very less chances of having any defect so that way uh, that reason where uh, the solidification is primarily because of the age, you know, because of that cooling. So that will be, you know, uh, the age contribution. And uh, the, the reason which is near to the riser placed, that will be the riser contribution. So that's how you have uh, some part which is given. And, uh, you know, if the riser is not adequate, the riser contribution area is more likely to get have, will you get you know, the shrinkage uh, defects or, or shrinkage spores or so. So that's why this reason is known as the, uh, you know, riser contribution. And there is certainly some, you know, formula for that. Uh, Mr. Rishi Ravi, which book uh, better because Looper book difficult for me? See, uh, the uh, Hein and Looper book is good uh, for, you know, getting, you know, better concept. Uh, Related to, to basically solidification or even gating, you know, you get uh, more understanding about the skim bobs and all that. Uh, you also can have uh, some more, you know, uh, concepts about the risers. So there also you have piping type of riser or many kinds of things are discussed. You know, so, the, so fundamentally that book is uh, very good. Apart from that, uh, you, I, I told you that uh, there are other books. P.N. Rao book is quite, uh, you know, uh, good to read. It will be, uh, you will enjoy it more because uh, uh, it's written that way that uh, you will enjoy reading it. But certainly, uh, if you read uh, Hein and Loper by having patience, it will help you. So you will be getting the, but, but uh, Hein and Loper is uh, P.N. Rao book also is, that way it, it covers many things and uh, for many exams it will be all right. But uh, the book which I suggest will be, which, which I think will be best at this moment. Apart from that you have the Foundry Technology by P. L. Jain is there. So that also discusses many things quite better. So that way, you know, you, you should uh, uh, refer to such books, uh, you know, that way. Okay, uh, Mr. Uday Kumar, uh, your question was, can I increase casting rate by decreasing cooling water temperature which is circulated around the mold? Now, this is uh, normally, uh, you know, uh, for the um, such type of casting process like uh, continuous casting where or any casting where uh, you know, casting rate means uh, maybe for continuous casting systems. So certainly, if you are increasing the cooling rate in that case, uh, certainly you have to give the larger casting rate because, uh, uh, you know, if the casting rate is less, 
in that case uh, it will solidify and, and then extraction will be difficult or so so that uh, may be one possible way uh, of increasing the you know, casting rate by decreasing the cooling water temperature which is circulated around the mold especially in the case of continuous casting uh, yeah, Mr. Rishi, you are, uh, I'm happy with P and Rob. Hi, P and Rob, we have also studied and for, it's quite, you know, uh, you know, you enjoy reading it because I also you can cover quickly the syllabus. So that way it is good. Uh, you, Mr. Yogesh are going to cover uh, star casting in upcoming course. Uh, now, uh, star casting is uh, uh, a casting technique uh, in which the stirring process uh, goes on. And uh, certainly it's used for uh, uh, some special kind of, uh, you know, uh, lectures. Uh, also, we have uh, uh, the lectures, uh, you know, uh, ahead also in this course also where we have just discussed about certain uh, casting processes you know like uh, semi-solid metal working processes or even the squeeze casting or so so let us see uh, i hope that uh, if i if possible in future we will have a course on star casting so and then uh, we can have discussions over that Welcome, show that. Anyone else, if you have any query? So any of you are from, whether you are from an industry? Uh, Mr. Yogesh, uh, you know, something about, uh, okay, this is retracted, so friction welding is something different, which we talk in the welding process. Uh, yeah, now, Mr. Uday Kumar, refer me books to calculation on solid heat transfer system. Uh, yeah, um, you know, heat transfer, for heat transfer, uh, you can refer to the book of uh, maybe uh, Ghosh and Malik. So there, uh, there is a lot of, uh, you know, examples, you know, of different type of heat transfer. So uh, you can read them and, uh, uh, you know, There are uh, standard books uh, that you can refer where there will be more questions of heat transfer, uh, like standard uh, book on heat transfer itself, uh, in which there will be. So this will uh, you are talking about uh, solid heat transfer system. So for heat transfer system, you have books like Hallman is there. Uh, you have Incorpora and David is there. So these are the books for heat transfer. So you can read them. So anyone, uh, you are all academic, uh, from academic institute or from industry also? Okay, good. So, so, so you are, uh, so that's why you have questions from the, the, the lead, you know, casting good it's nice to see that people from industries are also attending it 
from Mr. Rishi Ravi, uh, trial and error method solving equation. I'm confused how it is using calculator because I'm not using. Okay, uh, for solving such equations, you see, you have to use. Uh, uh, see, you know that uh, you have to write the equation. Uh, one side it is zero, so you you just uh, go on uh, trying with certain numbers so that it comes to a close to zero. So where it is wherever it is zero, you can get it. There are many ways. By by the way, uh, you can have the, some terms on other side, and that way also you can try. So basically, the thing is that you must have some idea. You can just try uh, with certain number and see that. Uh, how it is basically changing the right hand side value and based on that you can come to you know uh, uh, that uh, you know that stage where you can have the idea of something okay mr yogesh shinde possible provide images of important parts or processes for example strainer skim bob which will help for better understanding okay now uh, for skim bob uh, you know uh, Nowadays, you know, you can refer to the books which are available, you know, many books may be available online. So you can, uh, you know, uh, refer uh, these books and if you, uh, you know, search on the uh, internet also, you, you will get it. And uh, certainly it is possible to provide images. So maybe, uh, you know, if, if you uh, mail me, uh, if you ask me, then I can give you those uh, sites from where you can, uh, you can have the idea about these things. But better, you refer to the, um, you know, uh, textbooks, like the textbook of Mr. Peter Biele. So Peter Biele book is there. So there you can have all these books. Okay, Mr. Aksha, you are also from industry, fine. Uh, Aksha, you have again further asked that uh, kindly expand the sand ramming methods. Okay, so as we know that uh, when we talk about the uh, ramming of sand, uh, we know that normally there is hand ramming so that you leave, but uh, when you talk about the ramming by machines, so in that case, when we go for machine molding, in that case, we use, you know, primarily mm, mm, there is uh, jolting, squeezing, and combined jolting and squeezing. There is also slash sand slinging method. So the thing is that uh, when you, in the case of jolting, uh, you keep the uh, pattern at the uh, at the bottom of the box and and then you fill it with the you know, sand and then you are uh, uh, you know putting on a um, uh, platform and then taking it up and then allowing it to fall so accordingly there will be you know uh, jolting being experienced so and uh, slowly after few jolts there will be ramming there will be you know compactness of the sand and in jolting, what is seen that the compactness around the pattern will be more. And as you go up, uh, the compactness will be less. Similarly, there is squeezing that you have the pattern, you put the, you know, uh, sand around the pattern up to certain height. And then you are squeezing with a squeeze head and, and, and then you apply with uh, at large pressure. So in that, in the top portion, the more... Uh, you know, pressure will be there, more compactness will be there. And around the, uh, you know, pattern, so there will be less ramming. Now, uh, when we combine these two methods, so that way, in, 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 in that case, basically, uh, your uh, compactness will be, uh, you know, even. So in one case, in jolting, your compactness at the top is less. In case of uh, you know squeezing, compactness at the bottom is less. So if you uh, take the one followed by other, in that case, uh, the uh, you know ramming will be more even. That's how it is practiced. There's also a method of sand slingers. Uh, 
uh, where you apply the sand, you, you blow the sand at a very high velocity so that it will go and the compactness is achieved. So these are the different methods of, uh, you know, sand ramming. Okay, Mr. Rishi uh, Ravi, you want to know something about uh, chill, uh, it's inside and outside chill. Okay, so you know, uh, outside chill uh, means uh, uh, it will not be at all, uh, you know, uh, in, in touch with the liquid metal. So. Uh, it will increase the heat transfer rate through the mold and inside chill means chill means uh, you know it will be in direct touch with the uh, liquid metal so it, quickly it will solidify because chill is at room temperature and it's a material of very high thermal conductivity so as it is in contact with uh, the uh, liquid uh, metal it will quickly remove the heat so that's how the inside chill and outside chill may be. Inside chill has certainly, it will be touching the, you know, it will be in touch with the liquid metal. Outside chill, it's not in the touch with, but certainly as the chills are there, so uh, through that, the heat transfer rate will certainly be increased because of the presence of these metallic inserts. That is inside and outside chill. Okay, uh, feeding aids, see, uh, feeding aids means many a times uh, what happens that uh, when we talk about uh, the, uh, you know, risers, so we know that uh, what should be the volume of riser, what should be the size of the riser, larger is better, but certainly if you keep larger risers, uh, it's a loss or, or Uh, basically, um, it will be decreasing the uh, yield of the uh, casting. So, uh, what happens that uh, uh, when we do the risering, uh, in those cases, uh, uh, what we do is uh, uh, we do something so that the size of the riser should be less. So, one is that uh, you keep uh, the riser uh, liquid metal uh, molten for longer time. So for that, there are many ways. One is that uh, you reduce the heat transfer rate from the riser. So you can envelop the riser with, uh, you know, you can have uh, at, at some places, you can have, uh, you know, enveloping so that heat transfer rate is less. Uh, you can put some, uh, you know, uh, compound in the riser so that there is exothermic reaction taking place and uh, the because of the larger temperature the metal will be molten for more time. So basically the uh, feeding aids are basic, the feeding means uh, basically we, when we talk about feeding, we talk about risering system, uh, you know, so uh, in those cases uh, we try to use these methods you know, so that the size of the riser is uh, minimum. Yeah. You also taught, I had written something about the freezing wave mechanism, but you have retracted it. If you want to ask, you can write. Okay. See, when you talk about uh, the collapsibility, it's normally uh, uh, well understood when we talk about the sand. So, uh, collapsibility means what happens that there will be cracks developed so that you can easily, you know, when you are fettling it, you, it will be easier to remove because if you have to apply larger. So, it's basically because of the uh, expansion properties, uh, you know, uh, in that case, uh, what will happen? that uh, the metal will be, you know, it will be, uh, as the metal will be hot, so there will be expansion, 
and then there will be contraction, you know, and if there will be restraint in the um, uh, provided, in that case, uh, you know, it may, there will be cracks in at the interface. So basically the cracks are developed in the, you know, um, uh, sand itself. That is related to collapsibility because, because it's related to expansion defect. Now the similar thing is uh, for uh, the uh, core, but in core, in the case of core, it's even further severe. You know, so in that case, what happens in the case of cores, what you do is normally uh, you go for, uh, you don't use the binders or something like, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the uh, bentonite or so. Now, in the case of uh, uh, cores, uh, what you want, you want to see that with uh, some effort, it should be removed very easily. So in that, uh, once you, so it will be fried basically, it will be like a fried thing. So that is friable, just you touch and it will, should be, uh, it should be easily, you know, disintegrated and come out. So that is friable. So that's required in the case of core. So, because uh, they must not be sticking at the inner part or so, because uh, the cores are used to provide the inside dimensions. So uh, that's why in that case uh, that is uh, required. So that is related to expansion. Here it is related to that it, how it has become after be getting burnt. So that quickly as you touch it should be uh, removed. I uh, hope uh, this is okay. Now, Mr. Prasanna Kumar, your uh, problem was uh, related to the you know uh, freeze wave mechanism. So uh, the freeze wave mechanism, uh, you know, uh, freeze wave mechanism is uh, something which is experienced in the case of alloys. So as you know that uh, in the case of pure metals, uh, uh, it's a progressive, I mean, uh, uh, plane front solidification. So solidification will be at one place and then it will move. Whereas uh, in the case of alloys, uh, you know, what happens? So uh, what happens that when you are, uh, uh, it will start. So the, um, uh, certainly it will start uh, at uh, uh, one point and uh, it will move in a wave manner. So uh, when the, so this uh, freezing wave mechanism, it, it we were talking about what way, uh, at what time the solidification starts at surface and ends at surface. Similarly, when solidification starts at the center and when it uh, ends at the center. Now the thing is that uh, uh, certainly the uh, center portion will be uh, freezing towards the end uh, and uh, the, uh, the, you know, uh, uh, many a times the uh, and, and 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 again uh, the uh, portion at the car surface will start um, you know at early time. But the thing is that many a times what happens that uh, uh, the center time uh, uh, has basically started at some time uh, you know uh, maybe uh, when uh, just the solidification has finished at the uh, you know, surface or near the surface. So, so that way, a, a mechanism, a, a wave, in a wave fashion, the solidification pattern moves. And we know that in those cases, basically the center feeding is, because as the solidification time will be more and more at the center, there will be more chances of, uh, you know, having defects at the center. So, based on that only, uh, you know, this, uh, as it moves in a wave mechanism, so we talk about uh, uh, the freezing wave. So, so that is a freezing wave mechanism. Uh, and this you can uh, have, uh, you know, uh, uh, very uh, good understanding if you read the book of uh, uh, Rosenthal in that uh, basically uh, this uh, wave mechanism, freezing wave mechanism is uh, uh, being shown, and there it is uh, properly, you know, uh, discussed that how this freezing wave, uh, you know, uh, is uh, 
being uh, you know understood in the case of uh, uh, you know either sand mold or maybe in the case of metal mold so um, uh, you know based on that uh, you know uh, we have to understand that uh, now, uh, Mr. Akshay Singhji, you are talking about the Rio casting. So that is certainly one special type of, uh, you know, uh, casting process. And uh, uh, in this, as we know that, uh, you know, these are the uh, special, uh, you know, uh, casting methods uh, where, uh, you know, uh, you have uh, the semi-solid, uh, you know, this is... Uh, producing the, you know, this is a technique for just like the semi-solid metal working processes, metal casting processes. Now in that, uh, you know, uh, uh, what happens that uh, you are going to uh, have this slurry, you know, you have this slurry. So what happens that uh, you go on uh, uh, having uh, uh, that, uh, you know, uh, 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 start or you, you, you just wait till this, uh, you know, uh, so you have a solid as well as the uh, liquid zone coming up. And uh, if you uh, talk about, uh, you know, the uh, definition, Rio means, uh, you know, we know that rheology is, is uh, the another, you know, uh, science where uh, we talk about, uh, you know, what kind of, so basically, basically the viscosity becomes more as the temperature comes down the viscosity becomes more because the solid fractions uh, basically because they are becoming more and more so that way uh, we are going to that stage that's why it is uh, that real state and then when you are there is a, there is solidification going on in that case uh, uh, that is basically the uh, rio casting so uh, rio casting uh, is that Similarly, if you squeeze, uh, you know, in, if you do the casting by uh, squeezing, then that will be the uh, squeeze casting process. So that way you have uh, uh, different types of, uh, you know, uh, processes uh, which are, uh, you know, uh, defined, uh, you know, a special type of uh, metal working, uh, metal casting processes. And one is the radio casting. Welcome. Uh, Mr. Aksha, yes, sir, pouring liquid metal from bottom uh, gate is economical way. Now, see, the certainly the pouring time will be more as compared to uh, uh, the top pouring. But uh, bottom pouring has many advantages, as you know, in the from the top pouring when you do for certain uh, materials. Uh, you know, top pudding, uh, as I told that uh, top pudding, it will be most easy. And if the metal is not reactive, top pudding is fine. And, uh, you know, because for uh, in that it is uh, coming openly and it is going into the cavity. So if it is a reactive metal, then uh, certainly it will react with air or so. So that type of problems may be there. Bottom pudding, as you know, that uh, in that case, it is moving from the bottom. So uh, your, uh, you know, uh, in that case, uh, uh, it has its own advantages. 
so it all depends upon uh, you know what kind of metal you are pouring and top top pouring is uh, you know certainly it's it's mostly easy you are pouring from the top so it will go into the cavity okay so it all depends upon what kind of metal you are pouring and uh, you know if time is a factor or so so there are all these uh, things which are basically uh, to be taken into consideration Yeah, I, as I told, uh, you have written again about some industries pulled from all the gates, top, bottom. So, uh, you know, uh, it all depends. So, there is uh, no such harm. If the metal is uh, okay, if there is no defects coming, you can do, go from top, bottom, top pouring. From bottom uh, pouring, uh, also as we saw that uh, uh, there are other aspects like uh, in case of uh, uh, you know uh, top pouring your uh, uh, hottest metal is at the bottom and the slow coolest metal is at the top in bottom pouring your hottest metal is at the top and uh, coolest metal will be at the bottom so that way you have uh, also a, a temperature gradient set up accordingly so it all depends i mean there is no such harm you can go for and uh, mostly if it is heavy metals with uh, high density you prefer going for the from the top I mean, from the bottom gating because in that case the chances of erosion you know you, when you use the top gating is more erosion of the mold also unless you use those impact pads or so so, so you must uh, use them, uh, you know, accordingly, you have to um, uh, choose that top or bottom gating. So people are there, but they are asking. Still there it's online. We have uh, five more minutes, so if you have any query, you can ask. So is that uh, okay? Should I end this session? Okay. Bye then. Thanks a lot for your nice queries. Interaction.
yaşıyor.